Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online and ho 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 ho, it is spooky season, probably my favourite time of the year, not a big fan of most of the other festivals throughout but I do love me some Halloween and apparently the folks at CCP agree because it is time to return to the Crimson Harvest, ho ho ho, insert spooky laughter here. Now in this video I'm going to run you through everything that is coming as part of the Crimson and Harvest event. This is running from the 5th of October, so it is live at the time that you'll be watching this video, all the way through to the 6th of November. And there's a lot of really cool stuff going on, so I am going to jump pretty much straight into this one. If you do enjoy this video, let me know, hit like, drop a comment down below. Both of those things help me out mentally, and they help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you do want to be super fantastically awesome and help support the channel financially, I'll detail more of that later on in the video, and you can see a load of names in the stars at the end of every video as a huge thank you to everyone who does support in such a way. Anyway, the Crimson Harvest returns. So yes, this is a wonderful bit of Eve lore where essentially every Halloween period, the Blood Raider Covenant, everyone's favourite super aggressive bloodthirsty pirate faction based in a Mars space, decides to go on a little bit of a harvesting spree, shall we say. You then get the option of either joining the Blood Raider Covenant in their harvest or siding with the Amar Empire's Order of Tetramon which are kind of the the relic keepers of the Amar Empire, I suppose? Kind of like how Capsuleer Day 20 worked, you are going to be able to pick one of those two factions to side with and then jump into space and essentially help them out for some really cool rewards. On top of which, there are going to be some login rewards, there are some static changes to the game that are going to be happening for the duration now 5th of October to 6th of November, and there are some packs available in the store as well which we will look at in just a moment. So first of all, what is the actual content? Well, here we have how to participate. Essentially, when you log in, you are going to be given the option of joining the Blood Raider Covenant or the Order of Tetramon. You can open up the agency and go into events in order to choose this as well if you do close that window and you're looking for the way back. Pick a side, Blood Raider Covenant, Order of Tetramon. Look for horrific combat and hacking sites throughout Highsec, Lowsec, Nullsec, and wormhole systems. Now, I imagine this is going to be like the Capsule Day 20 event where the hacking sites are available high sec, low sec, null sec wormholes, whereas the combat sites are probably going to be exclusive again, or were they? No, they weren't. They were actually in wormholes as well. So, wherever you are in New Eden, you are going to have access to this content. That's pretty exciting. Combat sites will appear all over as anomalies in the probe scanner. You won't have to scan them down. There'll be green sites that you can just warp straight to. It doesn't say here what type of ship you can fly. Again, if it's like Capsule Day 20, then they will be limited to Battlecruiser. That was limited to, um, but I will update you all. Check the comment section. I'll put a pinned comment as soon as I know which ver you know, what the actual limitation on those combat sites is. Now you can use the Agency Anomaly Scanner to scan down sites and then warp in to take an, on a series of frightening challenges. So yes, as I said, it's going to be just click on the green things. You can also open up the Agency and it will tell you probably also in the air, uh, what do they call it now, the new system, air opportunities. It'll be at the bottom there as well where it'll show you if there are any of these in nearby systems that you can navigate to and jump in on. Kill all of the things, loot the stuff. There'll probably be some really cool exciting loot in that. Finally, the big passive change that has actually been live for a couple of days already and oh it makes things very very terrifying. Bring destruction in PvP and earn even greater rewards with loot drop rate increasing to 90%. So everything that is fitted to your ship, everything in your cargo hold, yeah, 90% drop chance. So ganking has become much, much more profitable. Be warned, if you are moving anything, whether it's through high sec, low sec, null sec or J space, make sure you've got scouts with you or you've at least taken the necessary precautions in order to survive. Because whereas that one billion is hauler that you were get, uh, moving around before might have dropped half a million, now it's going to drop closer to 900 million, 0.9 billion in loot out of a one billion-esque ship. Yeah, 
you are much more lucrative targets, PvP is a bigger thing. It's <laughs> kind of proves that EVE Online knows they don't need to add big scary monsters or your typical Halloween slasher film you know, kind of Hollywood monster thing to make something scary. No, nope. all they need to do is just find a nice little incentive to get the players to turn on each other. Welcome to the Crimson Harvest. You are being hunted. Very exciting. Also, just as a fun little aside on that one, note that if you do look at the wrecks as they are in game now, they are all little cute pumpkin icons, which makes me a lot happier than perhaps it should do. Reap the Grim Rewards. We have daily login rewards as well. I will showcase these properly in just a second. It says here um, about 250,000 skill points for Omega and 75,000 for Alpha Capsuleers. It does point out that actually that is a lot more later on. 55, uh, 550,000 skill points readily available and some really cool skins. So let me just alt tab into the launcher here. And you can see, in addition to your usual daily rewards, let's just grab this. How many skill points do I get? Oh, 15,000. Nice. We have our daily login rewards here. Now, the alpha track is available to, obviously, alpha players. And there are apparently a load of these. We can go along and see all the way up right to the end here. There we are. 33 days of these available. Uh, Alpha will get the top track, Omega will get the bottom track, and if you upgrade to Omega at any point during this, you will unlock all of the previous Omega rewards. So if you got all the way to day 33, you've claimed everything, and then you activate Omega, boom, all 33 days of Omega rewards are unlocked for you as well. And there's some really cool skins in that long here. Load of skill points, 550,000 worth. We have an Imacus and Helios Death, uh, Death Glow Remnant skins, Heron and Buzzard, both available there. This is very exciting for me as an explorer. As we come further up, Probe and Cheetah, Magnate, and oh, where's where's the uh, <laughs> no no Anathema? Uh, Tornado is included in there. Oh, there's the Anathema. A little bit further up, Stratios. Thunderchild, a little bit further, very exciting, I like these skins, can we actually showcase them here in the game, do we get the option, no we don't, I'll have to show you kind of what they look like in a moment, but looks like the explorers, tier 1 and tier 2 explorers all get death glow remnant skills, uh, uh, skins, along with the tornado and the stratios which i think is really cool and the thunder child really cool as a mimitar player i've just bought a load of tornadoes and now i get to make them look super uh, cool and creepy and halloweeny loads of ever marks um a load of boosters available there as well those will be quite nice to use um even fireworks crates as well which if i now alt tab back across to this we can scroll down and have a look at what some of these look like so first of all the death glow remnants i really like these skins that yellow and blood red very very cool death glow remnant there on the thunder child can't wait to see what these look like on my beloved cheetah probe uh, buzzard all of those very very excited even the harvest fireworks apparently they explode in really cool pumpkin holograms that's cool i love it i really love it like as halloween yeah, I know it's the typical sort of, oh, look at me, I'm your trendy goth, but I do love Halloween. I love me a bit of ooky spooky season, and so Halloween-y kind of fireworks displays. Fireworks are free hugs. I was taught that in Signal Cartel, and I firmly believe that. So, yep, I will be carrying firework launches and launching Halloween-y hugs at people. Might even pop some of them as well afterwards. Final bits here, trick or treat. Make sure to keep your eye on CCP TV for some terrifying Twitch drops, giving you the chance to snatch up some free goodies every week. In addition to these tricky treats, some of the streamers will offer an insight into the Crimson Harvest challenges, so you might learn a thing or two if you stay tuned. Basically, I imagine a lot of the streamers are going to be showcasing the different sites that are available, how to run them, what kind of ships are best for them, give you some setups, that kind of thing, and while you're watching, the chance of some cool skins and other tricks and treats dropped in there as well. Finally, and this I really like, this is so subtle, it's so minor, but I don't know, maybe because I'm a content creator, I just love this. To as leash and as much terror as you can, it's important to make sure your ship is fit for mayhem. In-game community fittings supplied by EVE partners and players will be available to view during the Crimson Harvest so you can put your best fit on. Don't be caught unprepared, find the best fitting for your rampage, rampage? rampage straight away. Essentially, if you want to join in the PvP but you're not sure where to start, you can now go into the community fittings in the fitting tab and actually have a look at some suggestions put forth by other players as well. 
that's really, really cool. I like that kind of inclusion where the content creators are getting involved as well. Finally, then, we have the uh, new packs that are coming in for this event. And again, again these are controversial, but I ch let's talk about them, right? So we've got a load of Omega and MCT packs that have just been added in here as well. Do we have any special Halloween-y ones now in the pack directly? Not that I can see. Uh, it's mainly just those little bonuses we saw there. So there's a couple of deals going on at the moment. Um, as part of the Crimson Harvest. Well worth checking out and having a look into, but for me, honestly, I am just super excited to have some more cool content to go hacking and exploring with, some really cool skins available, um, a lot of cool stuff going on there. When you first log into a character during the Crimson Harvest event, you will be asked which of the two factions you wish to sign up for, the Blood Raider Covenant or the Order of St. Tetramon. Now, for the bit of backstory behind those, you should be relatively aware. The Blood Raider Covenant obviously are a breakaway from the Amar Empire. They follow the Sunny Sabik, which is a Amarian-based re religion, all about the purity of blood and things like that. So lots of draining blood and drinking blood, and they're not really that much of a nice guy faction. It kind of makes sense that those would be your Crimson Harvest Halloween-y event guy kind of guys. The other side, though, are the Order of St. Tetramon, who are essentially the keepers of all of the Amarian religious scripts, etc. And therefore, as a Mimitar fanboy, I physically cannot sign up for those, you know, without wanting to cave my own skull in. So, yeah, I've signed up for the Blood Raider Covenant. Be aware that this does mean you're going for the other faction's sites. So, signing up for Blood Raider, I'm looking for Tetramon data sites and Tetramon combat sites to run. If you've signed up for the Tetramon faction, then you you need the Blood Raider sites to run. And it is only the event ones that are going to count for this, so don't think you can sign up for the Order of St. Tetramon and just jump down into Delve or wherever and just farm standard Blood Raiders. Doesn't work that way, you do need the event sites. Now, if you've accidentally clicked off of this and you know lost where you sign up for a faction, open up your agency tab, go into encounters, and it will give you the option here as well. We go into Crimson Harvest and it will have the option on screen. You can see I've already signed up for the Blood Raider Covenant in this, so I don't get that screen, but you will have it on screen when you see it. You then get missions. These missions are as they were in Capsule Day 20. You have one for scanning down and entering the network nodes or hub data sites. Um, these you'll get a mission for scanning it down and entering it, then hacking so many containers. So make sure that you clear the mission as soon as it appears on screen. Once it's cleared, you'll have it in the top left of your screen under your daily challenges. Click it, clear it, then run the site. The worst thing you can do is warp into a site, clear it all and then claim the mission for having warped in and your next one is now hack so many containers and you've already done them all so clear as you go. The combat sites again it is first of all enter a site then it's kill I think 10 ships as basic and then kill the battleship at the end of it. There are two rooms to these there are also rats on the entry gates be aware of that so it's technically three rooms and um, two of them are behind acceleration gates. As for what you can run these in, I haven't been able to test what ship size can run in these. I imagine, though, from the difficulty of running the site, it's going to be locked to Battlecruiser or below. Definitely something like your standard Ratting Drake should do fine. I ran a site with my Vagabond, the one that I've showcased in my C3 Heavy, Ass uh, heavy Assault Cruiser video. I'll put the link in the description of this video as well, just for those who are interested in what I was running, but it had zero issues at all. Obviously, you're going up against a lot of Amar ships. Expect to be taking electromagnetic and thermal damage, expect to be dealing with Amarian resistances, and there's a lot of neutralization, webbing, scramming, and pointing going on. So do be aware that when you warp into those sites, you are going to be scrammed, you are going to be webbed, you are going to be muted. Take that into consideration before for jumping in. Now, on completing these missions, you will earn points, or challenges, I suppose we should call them. And for certain boundaries of points, you're going to get skins. Here on the Blood Raider side of things, the first one I've managed to get from just running two sites, in fact, only really running one site, because the data one was, I ran a Blood Raider data site, therefore I haven't received the points for that challenge. Uh, but having run a single Tetramon combat site, I've managed to unlock the Maelstrom Deathglow Remnant skin. We then have a Vulture, Harbinger, Talos, 
Valraven, Karura, Bane, Hubris, Gama, Sin, Apocalypse, Moros, Dominix, Nagalfar, Vedmak, Paladin, Ferox, and Revelation. And these are really quite cool looking skins, if I'm being completely honest. Like, check this out. I love this kind of red and yellow skin that's going on with it. I know I showed it earlier in the video, but with that red skull, someone in uh, Corp Chat said, oh, this reminds me so much of The Offspring. You know, the band The Offspring? I'm like, hell yes, it really does. It's a really cool skin pattern. I like it a lot. And the fact that you can get this for things like your different Dreadnoughts as well, including the new Tech 2 Dreadnoughts, like the Karura, that's really quite sweet. I am I like these. I like these a lot. And it's just a load of skins for running these kind of combat sites. The loot not terrible. Um, you are going to need a mobile tractor unit for the combat sites. It is based on wreckage, um, so you're going to want to loot that wreckage. Essentially, I didn't make much in the combat site, but I think it is a bounty paying out site as well, which is pretty cool. Um, beyond that, the data sites, I made about 70 million in one data site. So for an explorer, that's good isk. That's really good isk, and I do strongly recommend getting out there and giving these a go. Be aware though that obviously this event does have that wonderful 90% loot from PvP kills. Uh, go, not only are these sites going to be popular because people want to run them to get the skins, you're also going to be nice and easy to get ganked in because people are going to be wanting to gank during this event and, you know, get the 90% drops from your wreckage. So do bear that in mind. Descan like your life depends on it because it probably does. Anyway, folks, that's all for the Crimson Harvest. Please let me know what you are most excited about. I'm going to be running a ton of these sites. I want a load of these skins. They are really, really pretty. Obviously, enjoy your daily login rewards as well and everything else that's going on. Let me know what kind of fun you're having. But yeah, I've just had off the side of the screen there, a bounty payment has come through, even though I'm based in JSpace. So even in wormholes, the combat sites are issuing bounty. Six million isk for, uh, bounty for that one site. Not bad at all. Good luck, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.